Midweek Magic is a free weekly event run on Magic Arena where players participate in various formats for a chance to win individual rare cards and cosmetics. This week's event started off the new Wilds of Eldraine Alchemy format where plenty of old staples have rotated out thanks to renewal season. One deck that was hardly touched was Mono Black Control, which still gives us access to some of the scariest powerhouses in the format. Nazgul, Shieldred, Orcish Bowmasters, The One Ring, and the brand new Beseech the Mirror are all primed and ready to become the dominant deck of the format. So let's get in some games with this deck before some bannings need to take place. Can we prove that something has to be done about Mono Black? Let's find out. All right, we're back for another midweek magic, and this week's gonna be a little degenerate because we got some uh, <laughs> some real powerhouses in this format. This seems like an absolute keeper. I mean, Orcish Bowmasters this early on the play is uh, pretty sweet to play. I wonder how this format's gonna look because we've lost a lot of stuff from like the Innistrad sets, from uh, Streets of New Capenna, all that. We are just flooding out on Nazgul's, aren't we? Okay, well, black still looks to be a pretty dominant color. Our opponent's on some sort of Rakdos deck. We will go and hit them with the Orcish Bowmasters. Do they have a response? A Bowmasters of their own, perhaps? Oh, they're just gonna take it. Okay, I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'd rather keep this Bowmasters around if I can. <laughs> we got the One Ring going on too, dear lord. All right, they're just gonna let us swing in. I am cool with that. I mean, they're definitely telegraphing some kind of response because they're just taking forever. Nice, we get some damage in. So post-combat, we'll go ahead and drop a Nazgul, even if it dies, like, whatever, it doesn't really matter. All right, we'll let the uh, the token be our ring bearer. I think mean, that thing's gonna stay particularly small for now until they draw some more cards. More black. What do we get from them? All right, is this something new? This is not something new. I just straight up don't know what this is. All right, well, there's no harm in dropping probably another Nazgul. At least grow it big enough to the point where uh, we can actually start attacking with it. Uh, we'll just keep that as our, our ring bearer. Now we can swing in with a 4-5 Nazgul, which is like kind of disgusting. All right, they're just gonna take it. I, I figured that would be the case. Kind of strange, I've, I've never seen one of these things before. I gotta say, this I think this is like a new background or something for uh, Wilds of Eldraine, at least it looks like it's new. This is a really pretty background, I gotta say, or, uh, or Battlefield, whatever you want to call it. Alright, they're just going for Mono Lord of the Rings, huh? They're gonna amass orcs? Uh, we don't like seeing that. However, I don't think they're gonna like it when we drop Nazgul number 3 on them either. Alright, we got another land. That gives us access to one ring, but I don't think we're gonna need it yet. They're not really putting up much of a fight with their tiny little creatures. And our Nazgul's are all about to get like enormous here. I think I actually want to swing in with my ring bearer, so I think I'll just make one of the Nazgul's the ring bearer. That way I can start filtering through cards. Cause sadly these, uh, this 1-1 one -one orc army is really not gonna do it. So let's get in. If they just take the damage, well they can't, that's lethal. Uh, yeah, we can just discard this demolition field. We really don't need that. Our opponent's got to make a... Well, okay, I guess they were just sick of playing mono black. GG's. <laughs> All right, rare wild card number one. Let's get something from Wilds of Eldraine, can we? No, okay, just a siege veteran. That's fine. I, I kind of wanted to build the soldier's deck in standard anyway, so uh, I'll, I'll definitely take it. We are on the play again, and this is uh, pretty disgusting looking. Honestly, having the shield in the one ring and opening hand is like pretty insane. Having a beseech just in case one of them dies, like, you know, unless we get mana screwed, this looks like a really good curve. So let's just hope we draw some lands. There, there are 22 in the deck. We got to draw them at some point. All right, land go. What you got, opponent? They're also on black. Yeah, black just seems to be the best color in the whole format at the moment. Uh, we're just going to hold up the mana. No need to send out this Bowmasters into a removal spell if we don't need to. This could possibly be a trap. I'll drop our Bowmasters. Oh, no responses? That's that's fine. Okay, we're missing the land drop. That's kind of not what we wanted to see. Might have jinxed myself a little bit in that intro. We will pass the turn. We at least have this cut down to deal with something small that they drop. Uh, that is too big. And that is also a Lord of the Rings card I'm not familiar with. All right, so it has something to do with sacrificing stuff. I don't... I don't love doing this, but we kind of just got to do what we can with the mana we have. We'll kill that with the go for the throat, swing in. We're still on the aggressive. Hopefully we draw another swamp soon so we can start dropping these Nazgul's. Feast of the Vicious Dead. Okay, that's an interesting one. 
We have another Bowmasters. So I think what we'll do, we'll just flash that in before damage, grow the Orc army, and then they take a little bit more damage. I mean, with two lands, you kind of got to do what you can, right? All right, our opponent just decided to pass, and we're not really having a good time here with playable cards, are we? Uh, I think we're just going to swing in again. They're dead in three turns, but uh, this looks like it's a trap. Taken by Nightmares. Uh, sure. I mean, that's really, really expensive removal. One top, one bottom? Well, that's not looking too good. I must admit. Land number five for our opponent. We're still stuck on two. Defiler of Faith. Ugh, that's not good. That's not good. Oh, actually, that is very good. We have the Liliana of the Veil. We can deal with it now. Sick. <laughs> Oh, the game punishes me for nothing. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's swing in. We now have a two-turn clock, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> yes, use your removal. Use your removal on the Liliana, please. <laughs> Don't deal with the creatures. They're not a problem yet. What on earth is this thing? Something with bargain? <laughs> it's a lightning helix? Okay, interesting play. Let's tick up. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to discard a Shieldred because like, we're just not getting there, at least not yet. We can't really swing in, so we might as well just drop a Nazgul. And they've only got one card in hand, so like, I don't really imagine they're gonna do much. We can at least get in with our Orc army, because it can't block, it's too small, or it's too big, I suppose. Our Orc army is too small. I'm just hoping they don't have anything good in hand, because if they do, like, we're a little screwed. Back for seconds. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, our, Linea our Liliana is gonna die, and they can now start blocking. Oh, that's actually really good. So, do we play Shieldred first or the One Ring first? You know what? I think we're just gonna go for a Nazgul this turn. Seems a little strange, yeah, but uh, we do kind of want to keep up some removal, and we can at least beseech the Mirror to grab some removal. We will make, uh, let's just say the first Nazgul. We'll make that our ring bearer. That way we can get in for some damage and we can loot, hopefully draw ourselves a land. That's what we're talking about. And we can chuck this cut down for now. Nothing's dying to that. All right, down to three. What can our opponent really do? Unless they have like a, a white permanent that lets them make a soldier. I think they might still just be kind of dead. All right, well, there's the defiler. Is it a white permanent? Oh, it's a white permanent. Not only that, a white permanent we really don't want to see. Oh, brother. That is a pretty bad duress. So, I think what we do here... Hmm. I think we're just going to make him have it. I think we just drop the Shieldred. And then, they kind of have to have it, you know? We can swing in with the Nazgul. Like, worst case it dies, whatever. We can chuck this duress. Gain a little bit of life. I mean, if they're just gonna chump it, like, doesn't really matter. They're potentially dead in like two turns. I bet they're looking at this. Yeah, it's a creature dying on your turn, buddy. That doesn't work the way you think it does. Uh, that's something else. Okay. Yeah, they're really flooding on tokens. I imagine they're probably gonna try to do something with this here. Pay two mana, sack a creature. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Honestly, I think once we drop this one ring, they're probably gonna realize that's game. They get another creature. We get to draw some cards. Let's play land. And we'll just drop the one ring on them just for funsies. So we get protection and I don't even think we bother attacking. I mean, we're not gonna take any damage for sure. They can still sack some creatures, but uh, they're not going to get any creatures back from this uh, Denethor, whatever this creature dude is. So they're going to activate in a response for sure. How much life do they choose to gain is the question. They just need to one to stay alive, but I imagine they're probably going to want to do more. I wonder if they're going to swing in. Maybe they've forgotten that we have uh, protection from everything. Swing in, buddy. Do they realize? 
<laughs> oh no, they don't realize. Oh, good game, buddy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's so sad. I'll hit him with the old sorry. <laughs> oh, you gotta feel bad. <laughs> That's so sad. I really hope our opponent isn't roping us, because we've been sitting here for quite a while. All right, I guess we take those. Oh no! Oh, it was something from March of the Machine, yeah. I think I got the full collection of rares, so uh, just a gem reward is a little disappointing. All right, so we're not on the play this time, and this is completely unkeepable. We only run the two demolition fields and 20 swamps, so we really don't want to see both of these in our opening hand. Uh, this hand looks pretty good, actually. I mean, we can potentially deal if they have a small creature out, we got the go for the throat, we easily get to the Nazgul, hopefully to draw the one ring, or uh, to, to draw the land to play the one ring. I think for now, I think we're just gonna bottom the Nazgul, honestly. Bit of a weird play, but I'm sure we'll find another one. There's like nine of them in our deck. There's no way we don't run into another one. We will go with the old Swamp. And from the looks of it, they're probably gonna be leaning on this Evolving Adaptive, so we can just kind of cut them off at the uh, early points. Oh, potentially not. So I think we gotta kill this Beast Caller before it gets too insanely busted. Oh, okay, sorry, it's just the number of counters on it. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll just wait for them to do something and then I'll respond on their turn. That way, if they try to go and put some 1-1 one -one counters on it, then we can just kind of uh, hit them with the old gotcha moment. Yeah, so we're gonna gotcha now. We're gonna gotcha. You don't get any counters. It's also nice to have like Tamiyo safekeeping out of the, the format. I know we still have other protection spells, you know, we got the uh, the Tyvar stand and all that. This is actually a really good card to get right now. I wanted to play the one of uh, Virtue of Persistence just to test it out, see if it was any good. I think this is a, a pretty decent card. So we'll go ahead and kill the Evolving Adaptive, and then later on, we can just go and cast this if it gets to the late game and potentially reanimate a bunch of Shieldreds. Tribute to the World Tree is a very good one. Do they have a one-drop creature to drop? Because uh, this thing is not getting there on its own. I mean, having the cutdown is pretty nice. If they decide to play small creatures, we can just kill it in response to the tribute trigger, which uh, is probably what we're going to end up doing. So I think I'm going to hold off for now. I don't really have anything to play immediately. They're going to exile something from our yard. And I believe it's after, it's three or more oil counters. Okay, so we still got a couple turns before that becomes an issue. Bloating Contaminator, that's a good one. That is sadly not something that we can do anything about. I mean, if things get real bad, we still have like one ring protection that we can leave up. Uh, what are they gonna do? They can just leave up the mana. I think we're gonna Orkish Bowmasters. That actually seems very good. I, I probably should have done that in response to the tribute. But now if they start, you know, <laughs> drawing extra creatures and stuff, like, we'll, we'll have them. All right, we're gonna get a Tail Swipe. So then I'm going to throw out another Bowmasters. I'll make an even bigger army. Yeah, so there goes one Bowmasters. If we could drop, like, a Shieldred or something right now, that would be insane. Okay, that's not the Shieldred. I think we'll get there, though. We're gonna go for a One Ring. That's what we love to see. So they're gonna exile some more stuff from our yard. That's fine. I think once they hit the third counter, I think that's when we're gonna go ahead and uh, nuke it with the cut down. Nazgul's nice. That'll be a good one to drop next turn. Potentially, uh, you know, stop them from going in with a bloated contaminator. Since we also don't take combat damage, that's not gonna do anything, so. That's like another bonus that we get. Okay, Ancient Imperiosaur is a good one. We're gonna need some like hard removal to take care of that thing. They're gonna have to exile one of their own cards from their yard. And then we can just get them with the cheeky little cut down. Yep, so let's just get that while we can. Boom, bam, there we go. That Imperiosaur is not gonna be too big. 10-10, I mean, it's, it's a pretty scary creature. We're also gonna get to shoot them with the Bowmasters and make this dude a little bigger, which is always appreciated. 
All right, another land. Let's see what we can get. Nazgul's nice. Yeah, I think we're just gonna do it. Even if they decide to hit us with the Imperious Ore, at least being able to take it out would be nice. Um, yeah, we'll just make that our Ring Bearer. We'll immediately go up to another activation of the Ring Bearer. Make the Nazgul's even bigger. And now we can just swing in with no consequences. Oh, that's a Shieldred. I think we're gonna get rid of the Orcish Bowmasters, actually. Because that gets, like, really insane with the One Ring. We're gonna start getting, like, a ton of life every turn. Pelucranos Reborn. Okay. If we could draw some removal spell, that would be fantastic. I don't think they're gonna hit him with the Contaminator. They do. Okay. Well, unless they have some sort of, like, fog? They, they might just be some freaking elite gamers or something here. Alright, down to 10. That's not too bad. We're gonna gain a bunch of life back anyways. Oh, okay, they're just gonna scoop it up. And our cosmetic is... Oh, that's a nice Soul Guide Lantern. I kind of missed that in the previous season. I guess that was like one of the reprints in Wilds, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely take it. That looks really pretty. Well, that was a bit of a wash. I, I expected Mono Black to do pretty good because of all the insane cards that are taking over like Eternal formats being legal here. I didn't expect us to just go 3-0 and and like half of them being kind of a salty scoop. I don't think the bannings are going to be immediate, especially with them pushing out a lot of like Wild of Eldrain stuff, but I imagine we're going to see some kind of banning in Alchemy sometime in the near future. Like there's no way that this deck is just going to stay top for like another year. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw today. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this in the future, go ahead and leave a like down below. Make sure to subscribe to get caught up on more MTG content, and you can follow me at JioticMTG on the social medias on screen right now, uh, assuming that they're not getting covered by the end screen. Until next time, take care.